This here is a mini PC. What does that mean? Well, it, it's a computer and it, it's small. What does that mean? Well, I, I, I don't know how else I could describe it. it it's, it's a computer, like a full computer that could run Windows and play PC games, but it's not big like a computer. It, it's small, like a, like, I don't know, like a small thing, like, like a game controller or something. What does that mean? Oh my God. Are you just going to keep asking the same question over and over just to annoy me? What does that mean? What does that mean? That's it. No, no, I'm not, I'm not doing this. I'm leaving. Make your own damn video. Hey there, how you doing? I'm TechSweep, welcome. Thanks for clicking on the video today. If you clicked on this video, well, why am I saying if? Obviously, you clicked on the video. And you probably did that for one of three reasons. One, you're interested in a mini PC and you want to know if this is a good one. Two, you're interested in this mini PC, the GMK Tech Nookbox 10, and you want to know how it does. Or three, you're just here to hang out with me because you like me. And if that's the case, then guess what? I like you too. And I'm still going to show you the PC. <laughs> Lucky you. The world of mini PCs is getting more and more crowded by the day. So these companies that make these things have to work hard to make their products stand out. I've checked out lots of mini PCs on my channel and I, I'm going to keep checking them out because I love them. And I, I think they're a really good entry point into the world of PC gaming. And also they're so small and cute. Look at this little mini PC. Isn't it adorable? Yes. Yes, it is. So uh, this, ladies and gentlemen, is the GMK Tech Nookbox 10, a tiny little mini gaming PC made by uh, GMK Tech, obviously. This mini PC has a Ryzen 7 5800H with integrated Radeon graphics, and it's less than $300. This processor at this price is freaking nuts. So if this performs as it should with this processor, then this might be just about the best deal on a mini PC that I've ever seen. In theory, this should be amazing for desktop PC stuff, graphic design, video editing, and yes, even gaming. I don't think it's going to blow you away with its performance, but at $300 and considering that this is about the size as a peanut butter and banana sandwich, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised at what you get here. Uh, we'll start with the unboxing, I suppose. It comes in a tiny little box, and in the box we get the mini PC itself. Uh, we'll check that out in a minute. We get our word papers, obviously. <laughs> Geek slash modern slash K creativity. Do, do you know what that means? I, I have no clue. In this little box, we get the power cable. And in this other little box, we get, oh, th oh this is a mounting bracket. If you want to mount this mini PC on the back of a TV or a computer monitor. And we get the power adapter. This is a 65 watt power adapter. Oh, you know what I've started doing? I need to start labeling my adapters because I get them easily mixed up and I hate hunting for the right adapter that came with the right tech thing. So I picked up this little Bluetooth label maker. I got this off Amazon. It was like 20 bucks. It has these little label stickers and it's inkless and it's Bluetooth. You use an app on your phone and you can design and print the labels. So quick and easy. I love this thing. I'll link to this below if you want one. There you go. It's my 30 second label maker tech review for you. So uh, what makes this thing a gaming PC, you ask? Well, the, the specs do. This thing has a Ryzen 7 5800H processor, which is an 8 core 16 thread processor with a max boost of 4.4 gigahertz. It's specced to run at a base TDP of 45 watts. And in addition to the 8 CPU cores, we also get integrated Radeon RX Vega 8 graphics, which also has 8 cores, with 512 shading units and a GPU clock at 2 gigahertz. My model also has 16 gigahertz gigabytes of user replaceable SODIMM RAM clocked at 3200 megahertz and a 512 NVMe SSD system drive. And we also get Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, gigabit ethernet, and it's sort of blue colored. It's a grayish blue, I guess. It's very small, like really, really small. 
and it has an all-metal shell. And overall, it has a very premium feel to it. On the front, we have our power button, headphone hole, one USB-C hole that can be used for data, display, or for power, which I really like to see. And we also have two USB-A holes. On the side, we have a Kensington lock hole and an SD card hole. Around back, we have an Ethernet hole, two more USB-A holes, two HDMI hole, and a power plug hole. I decided to do a teardown, just for fun, to see what's hiding under the hood. The bottom comes off and we can see the single CPU fan and a copper heatsink. If we want to access anything else, we'll need to go deeper. And there we go. We, we actually get a decent SSD. And there's our user replaceable dual 8GB SODIMM RAM modules. Overall, a uh, pretty simple design and it's easy to access everything. Not bad. Windows setup is very standard stuff. It's standard Windows 11 setup. And this is a nice clean Windows installation. There's no bloatware except for like 10 versions of Office that all have to be uninstalled individually. <laughs> Overall, this is a, a super snappy little system. And it runs pretty darn cool and quiet during everyday use. Basically silent, actually. If you're using this for like desktop stuff, you know, like web browsing, 4K video playback, watching your favorite YouTuber tech dweeb, you're gonna have a great experience using this just as a regular old PC. Even some more advanced applications like graphic design or video editing are gonna perform great on this thing. Let's do a few benchmarks, why not? First, we have Cinebench. Running the multi-core test, we got a score of 9,197, which is better than the desktop versions of the Ryzen 5 3600X and the Intel i5 10600K. That is nuts. That we're getting the same performance of those desktop processors in a $300 mini PC? <laughs> Bad. What a time to be alive. If you are alive. If not, then who cares what you think? You're dead. In Geekbench 5, we got a single core score of 1,971 and a multi-core score of 7,763. And in 3D Mark Time Spy, we get a score of 1,266, which means something to, to some people. I, I don't know. Anyways, uh, those are our benchmarks. And uh, benchmarks can only tell you so much, though. So let's be done with the benchmarks and move on to the gaming benchmarks the, the, the gaming benchmarks benchmarks starting off as always with shadow of the tomb raider so the way I see it, if a mini PC can't play Shadow of the Tomb Raider at all, then it's not going to work for me because that means that there's lots of games that I probably will want to play that I, that won't play well. Obviously, I'm not expecting amazing gaming performance on a mini PC that costs less than $300, so the fact that we're getting totally playable Shadow of Tomb Raider on this thing is very impressive. This is 1080p with a 50% resolution scale, which is 720p. Yes, it is. And at the low preset, we ended up with 31 FPS on average. Doom Eternal is just awesome. <laughs> I'm playing at 1080p, low settings, with dynamic resolution set to a target of 60 FPS. And we didn't hit 60 FPS, but the game did look great and it was absolutely playable. I could easily play through this entire game like this and have a great time. I got an average of 45 FPS. And now here's some Red Dead Redemption 2. This is running at 1080p with balanced FSR 2.0, and we're using low settings except the game defaulted to running with ultra textures, so I let it, and it actually worked out okay. I got 27 FPS on average, but it was a, a smooth 27 FPS. There weren't a lot of frame rate dips or stutters, so it actually felt fine. I could easily play like this. This was about the same FPS that the game ran on the Xbox One, and lots of people enjoyed it there, so I'm, I'm gonna give this a thumbs up. Next up, we have the Elden Ring. This is 1080p with the lowest settings except for shadows and anti-aliasing. Those are set to high. And at these settings, I got 31 FPS on average. So, I mean, if you get a mini PC like this, you're not going to get amazing 4K ultra settings gaming or anything, but you can play the modern games and have a pretty good time. Actually, maybe I lied. We'll see. <laughs> the acid test for any gaming rig is Cyberjunk 2077. Uh, this is 
720p low settings with balanced FSR, and I got 31 FPS on average. It was a little bit inconsistent, a little bit stuttery, but overall, if you really wanted to play cyber junk, I'd say you probably could play through the game on here and have a good time. You know, don't expect the most amazing performance during firefights, but even at these settings, you can enjoy the visuals, take in the city, and enjoy the story of the game. Same thing here. In Baldur's Gate 3, I would personally play the game like this because I love the game, but I understand that these graphics would be a big no from lots of people. This is 1080p, lowest settings, with ultra performance FSR, so it's a bit rough around the edges, and we we only got 26 FPS on average, and the 1% lows were down at like 6 FPS. However, the game is actually totally playable. It's a turn-based game with a top-down camera, so you could actually enjoy the game like this and have a good time going through the story. Considering how popular this game is and how cheap this setup is, uh, getting to play it on a less than $300 mini PC, that's not the worst thing in the world. <laughs> and uh, real quick, I wanted to show you some lower-end stuff. Here's Hades running perfectly fine. Smooth as, uh, what's smooth? Duck poop? Smooth as duck poop. Does that have a nice ring to it? Esports games are going to be no problem. Here's Dota 2, 1080p native with low settings. And this was a very action heavy match that I totally played and won uh, pr pretty much all by myself. I got 69 FPS, which is a totally normal number and not funny or noteworthy in any way. And then CSGO, the most played PC game in the world, running at 1080p with the low settings. I got 87 FPS on average. So even on a decent little mini PC like this, you're not going to get ultra high refresh rate performance. <laughs> not at 1080p at least. But you can absolutely play it and have a great time getting killed and laughed at by Russian teenagers. I also wanted to show you that we can run older PC games totally fine on a PC like this. So here's Borderlands 2 running at 1080p with the high settings and I got 50 FPS by the end of my little test run. A freaking awesome game, Borderlands 2. And I know what you're gonna say. You're gonna say, Techdweeb, why the hell haven't you tested emulation yet? To which I'd say, uh, holy crap, man, calm down. I'll show you emulation if you want. You just need to ask. There's no need to get all hostile. And then you'll say, you're right. That was out of line. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just going through some stuff right now. To which I'd say, oh, that's okay, buddy. Do you want to play some frogs and flies and talk about it? And you'd say, yeah, yeah, I'd like that. I'm running all this emulation off this, the Hyperbase LBOX hard drive. It's a pretty good product. It's a two terabyte emulation drive. It goes for like 115 bucks, so it's it's not a, a, bi a big expensive drive like some of the drives that I've shown. It's not a dual system like some of those other drives either. So uh, everything that here is done through one program. LaunchBox, which is a much better setup in my opinion. We get a really good collection of games on here. We get a bunch of older stuff like Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, and the ROM sets are good. There's not a ton of duplicates or foreign language games, and we also get a ton of the early 3D games. We get all the Nintendo 64 games, 30 Sega Saturn games, 40 Dreamcast games, 117 PS1 games, and we also get lots of higher ed stuff. We get 92 GameCube games, 20 Wii games, 10 Wii U games, 94 PSP games, 122 PS2 games, 21 PS3 games, and Switch. There's 17 Switch games on here, including some uh, questionable new games. <laughs> and then we have Windows games and 12 PS4 games. These are the PC versions of these PS4 games. I, I don't like when these companies include PC stuff on, on these drives. I don't like PC piracy, like I explained in this video. So I, I wish this stuff wasn't on here and they just put on more retro games. But hey, I'm not here to judge. I'm just showing you what's on here. Don't shoot the messenger. Everything that I tried worked right away. No messing around with settings needed. All these emulators were pre-configured and ready to rock. Basically, any emulation that you want to do on here will work fine. Obviously, all the older stuff like Nintendo 64 and PS1 will be no problem, so I didn't bother testing that. GameCube is good to go. 
I was playing Star Fox Adventures and it ran fine at a constant 60 FPS. PS2 is great. This is Need for Speed Most Wanted Black Edition and it's running perfect, which is very promising because PS2 emulation is kinda hit or miss on these mini PCs. I played some Wii U, Mario Kart 8, and it ran amazing. And then I tried some Switch. Here's Odyssey running at 1080p and it wasn't running perfect. There was some slowdown here and there. And the frame rate wasn't a constant 60 FPS, but it's playable. And PS3 was good to go. Here's Soul Calibur 4 and it's running great. And if you're really into emulation and you don't want to make your own emulation drive, like I show you how to do in this video, then maybe grab a pre-made emulation drive like this Hyperbase L-Box to pair with it. If you want either of these products, I'll include a link in the description below. My favorite part of this thing isn't the performance, which is solid, and it's not the price, which is shockingly good considering the performance. It's the way it sits on my desk. Yeah, it has a fan and you can hear it when it gets going, but lots of mini PCs that don't have nearly this performance are way louder than this thing. I, I think the solid metal chassis does some of the work to dissipate the heat. And also another good feature that I like is that you can power this thing with the USB-C port. So I can use the USB-C charger that's already on my desk. There's no need to use the power brick that this comes with. And I've really enjoyed reviewing mini PCs. I, I know I've reviewed quite a few of them recently, but I I'm doing it because I really like them. That's why I accept these products and why I take the time to make videos about them. I will always be a PC gamer at heart and I love building PCs and I'm not going to stop that. But these mini PC videos, uh, they, they do really well and they're fun to make and I think it's an exciting type of tech product. Actually, you know what I really want to do next? I want to check out a super cheap mini PC. I want to play with one of those and see what kind of games you can play when you spend like, like $100 on a mini PC. So let me know uh, in the comments what you'd like me to test on a low, on a really low end cheap mini PC. Anyways, uh, I hope you enjoyed checking this one out. Once again, there's a link to it below if you want one. Uh, thanks for watching good stuff. If you liked this video, then check out my mini PC playlist that I'll have linked on the screen right now and at the top of the description below. And you can go watch one of those right now because we're done here. I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.